Okay, so we are in the emergency department now. So we just finished rounding on our first patient. So we just finished anatomy lab. So that was it for the first trauma of the day. Okay, so next up, we're gonna be seeing a patient with abdominal pain. I have to admit, this is easily one of the most exciting days of my journey towards becoming a doctor. Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So tomorrow's a big day. I'll be starting my third year clinical rotations together with the rest of my classmates. As some of you may know, we were supposed to start our clinical rotations uh, several months ago, uh, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, they did have to delay those. So we're finally getting the opportunity to start our clinicals. I'm super excited, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, I'm kind of feeling everything. And so my two roommates and I are gonna be starting on psychiatry, which should be pretty interesting. It's not necessarily a field that's super high up on my list right now for possible specialties, but it's really good to go in with an open mind. That's what they keep telling us. And so that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna wake up early tomorrow morning, do some prep work and get to the hospital for orientation. Good night for now. Good morning, everyone. It is 6.30 a.m. I haven't had to wake up this early in months, so I can't complain too much. I'm just gonna hop in the shower and start getting ready for day one of clinicals. So I just wanted to show you guys all uh, what I'm going to be bringing with me for my first day of clinicals. First and foremost is the white coat. That's something that all medical students have to wear at all times while they're on rotations. And in my white coat, I'll take my stethoscope, my perfect H&P book. That's basically a book with uh, outlines to take a really good history and do a full physical exam on patients and sort of record your findings. A reflex hammer and tuning fork in case I have to do any neuro exams on patients. A pair of goggles uh, for eye protection in case we see any COVID patients or patients who are suspected to have COVID. And I think I'm going to be wearing a blue striped shirt with a blue tie and black pants. And last but not least, my handy dandy water bottle with a liver and gallbladder on it because those are two of my favorite organs. Um, and so yeah, that's what I'm taking with me today. Are you ready, Nick? I'm, aye aye, Captain. <laughs> All right, everyone. So we're on our way to our first day of clinical rotations. So it's about a 40 minute drive, I think it said. 40, 50 um, minutes. 40, 50 minutes to the hospital. So far the drive has been really nice. Uh, there's a lot of nature that we have to drive through, so it's been pretty cool. So at this point, the focus of our education really is on seeing patients and learning how to treat patients and interact with patients. And the model that our clinical preceptors use is something called the RHYME model. R stands for reporter, I stands for interpreter, M stands for manager, and E stands for educator. And those are sort of seen as steps in our learning. So if you're a reporter, you're basically able to collect relevant info from the patient and report that to another physician or team member. Uh, if you're I, an interpreter, you're able to take that info and actually interpret it, right? Come up with something useful out of it. If you're on the M phase of learning, you're able to not only interpret the information collected from the patient, but also come up with a treatment plan and how to manage their condition. And then finally, once you've reached E, educator, that's when you could do the R, the I, the M, plus teach it to a peer and look up relevant research in that field. So if you find it in your heart to do so, please smash that like button, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment down below with any questions or concerns. You can also reach out to me on my Instagram at yakscience with any questions as well related to applications, pre-med, medical school, anything in between. I don't know the lyrics, the problem. Okay, we've arrived. He got us there in one piece. Two pieces, technically two pieces. Two pieces. Yes, we were conjoined before this, but then I successfully did surgery while driving and yeah. separated So us. now we're in two pieces, two pieces. thankfully. Okay. Yes. So we're at the hospital. We're hopefully not gonna get lost, but we're heading to an orientation first. I think that's what they said, uh, and we'll keep you updated. It's actually really pretty out today. Yeah, it is a gorgeous day. Yeah. Being August in DC. I know. Virginia, Maryland, DC, they're usually really muggy in the summer, but it's actually been really nice. Hey everyone, so we just had our orientation. We met um, with some of the coordinators here and we met with a few of the attending physicians we'll be working with. What have you what are your thoughts? 
Um, I'm excited. They sound like great people. Um, they're super nice, and I think they're just enthusiastic about teaching, which, I mean, you can't ask for much more than that, really. And we didn't know this at first, but it looks like we're going to be spending most of our time with inpatient adolescent and child psychiatry, which means we're probably going to be taking care of mostly um, kids aged about 13 to 18. So I guess in terms of goals for us, the attending physician really wants us to basically master or get close to mastering um, doing a good psychiatric history on a patient, um, how to ask the relevant questions, how to form a good differential diagnosis for what could be going on with the patient. Um, and then of course, ultimately how to manage patients with different psychiatric conditions. Another big thing that we're hoping to learn is how to do a mental status exam, mm -hmm. which is basically one of the most important exams in a psychiatrist's toolbox. It involves examining uh, the patient's thought processes, cognition, uh, appearance, behaviors, and sort of everything in between. So it sounds like it's gonna be a pretty cool rotation. Um, yeah. I'm excited. By the way, this is sort of our study space uh, that they gave us. They gave us two desks. This is Nick's desk, and I guess this will be my desk. And so it was super nice of them to give us our own wall space to have lunch and study and yeah, talk and about patients. Downtime, prepare to see our patients, et cetera, read up in their charts. Exactly. Do some UWorld questions. Oh my god, yes, the dreaded UWorld questions. For those of you who don't know, UWorld is essentially a question bank uh, that's supposed to help us prepare for the exam that we take at the end of every rotation, as well as the big national step two clinical knowledge exam. All right, everyone, so we just got back from doing uh, a number of different things. We uh, sat in on a team meeting with uh, social workers, nurses, doctors all meeting to discuss the patients uh, for today. Then all of a sudden unexpectedly uh, the psychiatrist we're following got a consult to the emergency department because someone came in uh, presenting with most likely signs of delirium. Yeah, it was an individual in his upper 70s um, who on Saturday had a pretty bad fall um, and since then uh, had been acting out in ways that his wife uh, said was abnormal and uh, he was constantly wanting to leave the house and so he was brought into the emergency department because of that. And so it's really interesting to see uh, how psychiatrists uh, function in the emergency department to work patients up and determine if they need to go and get admitted to the inpatient psychiatric ward or get discharged. We also got to participate in rounding, and Nick and I both got to interview uh, some of the kids who are on the inpatient wing of the psychiatric ward. Yeah, it was, it was a great first practice at um, trying to get all the information that we need in order to be able to effectively help the patient. It's been emotionally pretty draining already. I mean, uh, seeing anyone struggle with their mental health to the point that they're the, a harm to themselves or others is hard enough, but seeing it in a kid uh, somehow makes it especially difficult um, to hear and to talk about. So those are some really important skills I think that we're going to gain over the next four weeks is being able to talk openly about things like suicide and depression, anxiety, self-harm, uh, sexual abuse, everything in between. Things that are oftentimes taboo, oftentimes hard to talk about, but it's our job to normalize those things in conversation so that patients feel comfortable talking about it with us. Yeah, and to be able to do that in a sensitive manner, um, and in some cases uh, using some trauma-informed care, uh, definitely will go a long way. And so it's going to be uh, a big learning curve, but I think yeah. uh, four weeks here will definitely help us um, get better and utilize those skills. So our next step right now is to write up some notes on the patients that we interviewed. Paperwork, my favorite part. Paperwork, of the, the best part of the job. And then after that, I think we're just gonna go get some lunch. They have a cafeteria down here apparently, so we're gonna check that out, see where we're gonna likely be eating for the next four weeks, mm -hmm. and we'll keep you posted. Alrighty, we are off to get some food. Let's see how the cafeteria is. Yes. Nick, what'd you get? I got a veggie lasagna with a side of veggies. <laughs> veggies on veggies on veggies. And then the orange Fanta for your fruit. Right, exactly. Because of oranges. Very healthy lunch here. Alrighty, we just finished food. It was not too bad. 
Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Right. And we're just going to check on some patients and get some paperwork done. You ready? Ready. We're back in our study space. Nick is already off and working. So we've got our work cut out for us. It's a lot more than I thought for our first day, but I'd say overall, we're really enjoying uh, every minute of this. We've gotten to see some really amazing patients. I don't know, what do you think of the patients we've seen today? Yeah, the patients have definitely been um, interesting, uh, but also just a lot of them very sad and tragic stories. And nope. so it hits pretty hard. It does, it does. Thank God for masks and glasses that fog up because I actually started crying um, I wasn't doing the interview, thankfully. Um, I was watching our attending physician do the interview, but this patient had been through so much trauma um, that I, uh, I literally started crying um, in the room. So I, uh, I wasn't loud about it, <laughs> thankfully. I don't think anyone necessarily saw it. Did you see? Did you see no, but I was sitting behind you. There you go, okay, that's why. Yeah, so it's it's tough, but I feel like we're doing good work. So one thing that our attending physician also wanted us to do is to meet up with some of the kids who are on our inpatient psych ward and conduct one of these. This is called a SCARED, a Screen for Child Anxiety Related Disorders. Uh, and this is called a CESDC, which is a depression scale for children. Um, so this can give us some really useful info about any anxiety and depression symptoms that the child has been having. Um, and that can in turn influence sort of our differential diagnosis and treatment plan. All right, so Nick and I just did our uh, questionnaires with some of the kids uh, to screen for anxiety and depression. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get those scanned and uploaded into their uh, medical records so that future providers can know uh, what the results were. And so up next, we're going to be joining in on a psychotherapy session with uh, the hospital therapist, who's an amazing guy. Uh, and so that should be pretty interesting. All right, so we just finished uh, our therapy session with the kids. It was really interesting to see uh, the therapist interact with them. Uh, we also got to ask a few questions and participate, which was really nice. So Nick is just working on one last note, then we're gonna stop by the attending physician, check in, make sure we've done everything for today, and then head back home. Nick, what do you think of the weather? Oh, it's lovely out. The it's sun so is shining. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Nick, wait for me. Oh my God. It was absolutely pouring just a second ago and now it seems to be slowing down, which is good. All right, you got a free car wash, I think. I did get a free car wash. Very much a free car wash. It was pouring out there. And of course it stopped now that we actually got yep. in the car. The second we get in the car, no more rain, the sun's out, sun's out. It's amazing. Guns out. So, first day impressions. What do you think? Um, I think, first of all, uh, psychiatry definitely is going to take a lot out of me. Yeah. Even though, I guess, the hours are more relaxed compared to other rotations I hear. Um, still, I think emotionally it's going to be a lot more. Um, and especially just with this being our first rotation. But yeah, so far the patients have been great. I've loved getting to know them better, get to yeah. talk to them, know their, learn their story. Totally agree. Um, the kids are amazing. The adults we've met so far have been really great as well. Um, like you said, everyone has their own story and it's been really cool to be a, a part of their a part of their care and a part of their recovery. You ready to head back home? Let's do it. Let's do it. I just wanna go home. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you do. Just wanna go home. All the SpongeBob references.